This is my garden fly. Uh, the hook is a Daiichi 1870 in a size 10. I found this to be the best size. They do it uh, 8s, 14s, but 12s. But I find that the smaller sizes, it just doesn't look like a worm and also um, starts to look like a kind of caddis pattern or whatever. Uh, this style of hook is seemingly called a keel hook um, and it fishes this way. I've added 20 layers of lead. Um, I've not tried it with any more, I'm just trying to keep the slim profile uh, but I find it fishes, it tumbles down the river uh, and I think that's because it's not too heavy I don't think it'll do uh, high deep water in the winter but I'm going to try it uh, perhaps on a dropper uh, I'll see how it goes um, but up until now I've been fishing it on the point and I must admit I've never had as many fish on the point fly uh, the grayling I've been absolutely loving it, has of the trout. Um, very good in streamy, fast, slim water, whereas most flies would snag up. This doesn't. Um, right, so here we go. So basically, as I say, I've got 20 tons of lead wire. Now, to cover the wire and to add the body, I use what they call unis, uh, uni stretch in white. Um, not very readily available. I'm having to get it from America. Um, now what I do is two or three turns in front just to make up the gap in the lead. I really don't like lead but uh, there's not really any other option with this because the beads don't go around the bend in the hook uh, and it makes the beads make it too bulky anyway. So uh, I've just found this to be the best option. So if you Keep your tag end and then bring it over, it stops the uni stretch or thread sinking into the lead wire. I see a lot of guys really struggling to cover it. There that's covered in two passes. Again, keeping it slim, so once the lead's covered, that's basically it done. And then twist the thread away from you. And that opens it out, that makes it even thinner. Slightly reposition the hook a tad. And then back. Keep it very, very slim at the front and the back. Just round to the bend, back up. Again, minimal. Doesn't really matter if you miss, uh, it just adds to, to the kind of natural look of it. Doesn't need to be totally covered. Um, just a wee bit there. I'll do it. And then just, it's a single turn all the way down to the bottom. And leave a bit of space. I like to keep the eye clear as possible. Because at the end of the day, it's. You need it there for the finish. I see a lot of flies that are really bulky at the eye, you know. Try and always keep that free, maybe just a mill or so. Cut that off. Now at this point I uh, add the colour. You can add um, anything you want. <laughs> um, this is what I class as my natural one. Um, this is probably the trickiest to colour. It takes uh, four different pens. Um, now don't ask me about this. It's called in the middle of the worm, but it, all worms have it. It's a kind of band section. It can be different colours. Um, this one's been very good, has as the red and the pink, just solid red and pink. I'm actually going to get uh, uni stretch comes in um, pink and red, so I'm actually going to get some and that will save me colour in it. But for now, I'm just colouring it with a pen. Um, that's the only kind of block you put on, the rest is just messy. Just dab it. You can see the uni stretch, big difference from thread. Just need to touch it with a pen and it spreads out. And the uni stretch is much softer than thread, and I think that it aids to the actual fly as well. Um, just a kind of light purpley pinky colour, and just run that up the top, let it bleed down. Again, very natural looking. Uh, I couldn't get this fly to work at all with a nymph skin. Uh, I'd been doing some caddis patterns and things like that and then I was looking on the internet and 
I saw an American tire called um, David Highs and he had, I think it's his wax worm he calls it, but he actually covered the nymph skin in varnish and I tried it and the colour just absolutely, well no varnish, UV resin, um, it, the colour absolutely popped out um, and since I started using the Solares Thin um, it just, it's just been a great fly. Right, so that's the colouring done. It looks a bit messy, but you'll see when it's finished, it looks really natural. Um, now, what you need to do is add the thread. Now, this vise is quite good if it doesn't slip out. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to work around the camera here. So, what I use is my old trusty Nano Silk, uh, but you need two bobbins. Uh, the one at the back is 6 aught. I use this for my ribbon. Um, rather than like, um, you could maybe use like nylon or that, but it's very thick. Uh, keep it very thin. I hate build up. You can't use scissors in nano salt. You need to use a scalpel. You can get them out of uh, hobby craft or three quid with six blades are great. Just chuck it away when you're finished. Right, so spin the thread towards you just to tighten it up. Now, again, my eyesight's really bad, but if you just catch the, sorry, should have shown you, uh, cut your virtual nymph skin, get it from Dale Rushby at Virtual Nymph down in England, cut it at a kind of 45 degree angle. You need about six to seven centimetres for this. Uh, don't do use any more because it's you're just wasting it. I did get a message from a guy in Yorkshire asking for the length. Uh, I thought the Scots were tight, but seemingly the Yorkshire's even worse. Right, so tighten it in, and now you put eight aught at the front. You can see that's coloured from doing another one. Now, as you see, because I left the I free at the front it allows you to put the the thread in and then touch it up with a felt tip pen. These are just sharpies. That's it. Now I saw this somebody else doing this and it was actually quite messy. Uh, I'm a neat freak. <laughs> now what you do is pull the first lot out quite tight and the second turn and then after that it basically shows you where to fold it. Keep it stretched out, keep your finger on top, then it'll no spring back in you, even if you let it go, it'll only go back as far as you're holding it. But you can see there, well, I hope you can see in the camera, you can actually see a line, and that basically shows you where to put the next, and that keeps it very nice and even, great segments. For this, caddis, anything like that at all, you want a segmented body, this stuff is great, it comes in all different colours, but... This is by far my favourite. I found that by adding the colour underneath, even on caddis patterns, it just looks far more natural than adding any colour or actual coloured um, products. Really tighten it out at the end, keep it slim. Uh, now my wee trick for finishing it off is the last turn, make sure it's nice and tight in the vise, put your finger underneath. Now again with the nano silk, you can really uni with uni threads etc. would snap doing this. This just pull it tight and you get a very very neat finish. There's about ten turns and you can't even see it, and it'd be even better with. I find the I use the eighteen on small dries etc. But I find the twelve's the best kind of user friendly size. Uh, it's really pull it in scalpel. 
you can see there even with six or seven centimeters and numb skin there's still a good bit left to play with um, and then put your scissors underneath hold the hook pull it really tight snip and that's a neat now nearly finished just to put the rib up spin your thread get it really tight colour it with a dark purple paint that's another thing about nano silk you can you don't really need a lot of colours you can just use felt tip paint I just really use white and black and that's it right, so that's the thread colour right, sorry I need to use the magnifier for this I'm blind Now you just follow the, keep it very tight, just follow your last There we go, and run out of colour And again, we dab a colour Just, if your vice is high enough you can always keep the tension on your thread just by letting it go and it doesn't touch the desk, so uh, wind that up, just check that, yep, nice and neat. And then just always just get it really tight at the end. I like it really, really slim, get into the head. And that's it. Flip finish. Here's my flip finish at. David McPhail. Learned every, all my time from Dave McPhail videos, so if you need any instruction at all, there's that he's your man. And that's basically us. Now, that looks okay. I'm not sure about the light, but what really now makes it pop is... solar is thin. Now I put this on with a brush when I'm doing a lot I actually put a wee bit on a card now you need the tiniest tiniest amount that might even be too much I don't make flies to last for 10 years as long as they catch fish but I feel that the thinner you can make them the better so I don't overdo anything Get a nice sable brush, maybe cost you four or five pounds, but um, clean it with acetone. Uh, that's the only thing I've found that cleans the stuff properly. But you can also kind of you see guys messing about with dubbing needles and all that kind of stuff. You just don't get the finish in it. It's far quicker doing it this way. Sorry, I'm, it's very awkward trying to work around the camera here. Apologies, but I think you can see the solar is just absolutely makes us pop, and it also brings out the. See when you add the when you add the coloured um, rib, um, and it really pops out. But you can do it without that. And then just add the torch. And that's us finished. The garden fly.